Hello everyone. Welcome back to your favorite channel Studlins which adds excellence to your learning. I am sure you are eager to learn more about C++ concepts. So before we start, let's explore the importance of this language and understand why it's recommended to learn C++ as a first programming language despite having many other languages like C, Java, JavaScript, Python and more. Here's your chance to find answers to all these questions. The majority of us dream of working for the top companies such as Facebook, Google, Microsoft and many more. So, you're wondering how to get into these companies and achieve your dream? Surely, you have heard a lot about competitive programming, problem-solving skills, and data structures algorithms. This can all be done through this programming language whereby we can apply its different concepts to find solutions to more complex problems in a more straightforward manner. Some of the more prominent features that make C++ a big enough friendly programming language is as follows. It is one of the most simple programming languages having an English language like syntax. Additionally, it is considered a machine independent language meaning its code can be executed on any operating system such as Mac, Windows, Linux and Unix. It also comes with a rich library to make our work much more easier and manages the operating system's memory more efficiently. The library related concepts and topics will be surely discussed in depth with the further lectures. As a result, I am pretty confident that by now you've gained a better understanding of why you should choose C++ as your programming language. To begin with, let's take a step back and think about what and where we might be able to apply C++ to achieve the desired results. To understand the same, let's look at the real life calculator example. When using a calculator to perform some arithmetic operations, for example, say I want to add 20 and 30. We will take 20 and 30 as numbers and after that we will use plus as the operator to get the output. Now let's look back at when we entered the operations we needed to execute. How does this calculator actually perform additions and not the other operations like subtraction, multiplication and division? It's according to the written logic here that whenever we enter the operator, the calculator only performs the operation corresponding to that particular operator. Let's take a look at this diagram. The input has been provided and as the input has been provided, it is being sent to the processing part where the logic part is being written. This is where we write the C++ code so that the operation can be performed. The result of adding 20 and 30 is said to be 50. By knowing this, you would have had a better understanding of how the logic is actually written and how it operates. So now, let's look at the history of C++ before we close this lecture. It was developed by Bjorn Sandstrup in late 1979 as an extension of C language. Since then, it has been revised in multiple versions including C++11, C++14, C++17 and C++20. Some of the places where C++ is more commonly used and oftenly used are as follows. Many operating systems make use of it like code. In addition to this, it is also used in design of attractive graphical user interfaces 
also known as GUIs, and in many other gaming engines. C++ is a programming language used by most famous browsers like Mozilla Firefox and Chrome. In the upcoming lectures, we will explore more about the features and properties of C++. This whole certification is divided into modules where we will be covering from basics to advanced level like variable declarations, conditional statements, OOPS concept and their pillars and some of the important concepts of C++. This interesting journey will end with preparing a C++ based automatic login registration system. So let's start. Congratulations on completing this concept. We will get back to you with some more interesting concepts in the upcoming video. Till then, take care and bye-bye.